when you get in an environment like we're in, I think everybody can think, but thinking is not the most, uh, I, I think critical thinking is the most important thing. And the reason I say this, I did a TED talk about 10 or 12 years ago that got banned because it was considered too controversial because it was based around this idea of centralization versus decentralization. And I said in it, uh, as the, the last line in the talk, ideation without execution leads to deletion of every good idea. Good ideas come from critical thinking. So if you really want to take it back to the nth level, where does critical thinking come from? It actually comes from mitochondrial redox. It actually comes from being plugged in to the proper you know, decentralized network. Like People don't look at planet Earth as the spaceship that traverses the Milky Way and the galactic plane but that's what we're evolved to. And when we are told by doctors for the better part of 50 or 60 years that some of the things in this universe are not good for us, like the sun, which you can see me sitting in now, um, you've got to start asking your question, who's benefiting from this advice? And unfortunately, I, I'd be venture to say that probably 98% of the people that watch this podcast on the surface we gave them a multiple choice question before they listened to it to say, yeah, I, I definitely would use sunscreen. I would definitely do this because it's a problem. And I'm going to tell you the data is exactly the opposite. Uh, in fact, if it wasn't, the trees behind me and the wild animals out there should all have skin cancer. And they don't. And that makes you ask the question. And then when you say to the dermatologist, you know, there's another funny thing in the literature that you guys have. Those people that get melanoma, skin cancers of all type, they tend to have low vitamin D levels. Well, vitamin D is only made from UVB sunlight from the sun. So if the sun really was toxic, tell me why that's the case and why it's been shown in every single study that's in the dermatology literature. It's because that's not the type of light that causes the problem. But see, if they keep you out of the sun, what do they do? They make you an obedient idiot so that you keep coming back and getting a wallet off. See? through the centralized program. And then guess what? The profiteers that own the dermatologists and ophthalmologists do pretty well. Uh, and they try to muzzle guys like me that point out, hey, instead of believing what the doctors tell you, how about you go read their literature? And you know, when I throw these papers in front of dermatologists, it's kind of like the end of a, a Bugs Bunny thing. Badeeb, 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 that's all for us. They just don't get it. And the thing is, you're... Your evidence-based medicine is only good if the evidence is good. And it turns out uh, when you cherry pick the data to support the narrative that supports the profiteers because they're paying your salary, 50 years after the effect, you see what I've seen where I saw medicine changed. You know, if you looked at a pie chart, when I first went to medical school, this is from 1986, um, back then, Doctors made 73% of the, the gross money that was allocated to healthcare. You know what it is today? Less 10 than 10 percent. 10 percent. Okay. I was gonna say less than 15. Yeah, it's 10 percent. And guess who now makes 73% of the gross profits? Hospital administrators. In fact, you can look at a trend for the time I've been a doctor, the single number one growth area in healthcare is become a hospital administrator and you'll make yourself happy. It used to be when I was younger. You know, your mom wants you to become a doctor. Now, yeah. it's, if you become a doctor, uh, I would actually tell you you're an abject moron. I, I told both of my kids, if you want to go to medical school, I'm not yeah. paying for it. 